In this video, we're going to write code in Excel VBA that allows us to extract distinct values from multiple columns in a data set and then perform a sum if based on those distinct values. So you can see here I have a small data set of orders by branch location. We have a column for the branch number and one for the order date. And what we want to do is use the advanced filter to extract the unique values from both of these first two columns and then perform a sum ifs based on those distinct values. So here's a preview of what we're going to create today. I ran this macro button and it extracts the distinct values for both location and then order date. It then sorts based on order date so we have you can see here for branch one on July 1st it had 1386 dollars and 84 cents on that date and that's what gets totaled over here to the right I can also add a new record so if I add another branch 3 for July 12th and I'll just make it something really large so it'll be noticeable for like hundred thousand dollars so the value here should change to a hundred thousand more when I run this again and there it is so the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by going to the developer ribbon and clicking on this visual basic button or hitting alt F11. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert and then module. We'll call this subroutine distinct. We're going to begin by declaring some variables. So our first variable is going to be called WB going to be as the data type workbook represents the workbook we're in now we're going to have a variable called WS it's going to be as the data type worksheet represents the sheet we're on now we're going to have a variable called RNG short for range it's going to be as the data type range it's going to be the destination range where we eventually paste our unique values to so it's going to be E1 through F1. We're going to have a variable called last row. It's going to be as the data type long, and that is just going to represent the last row containing values in columns E and F. Once that data, those unique values from over here get dropped in these columns so that we know how many rows our sum ifs formula needs to go down. So we're going to begin by defining our object variables, which are workbook, worksheet, and range. Those are objects that need to begin with the keyword set. So our workbook variable is going to be equal to this workbook. Our worksheet variable is going to be equal to our workbook variable we just created, worksheets, and the name of the sheet we're on now is called orders. We're going to set our range variable equal to our worksheet variable we just created, and that is going to be equal to the beginning point of where we want to place our unique values, which is E1 through F1. So now, at this point, we want to reference our worksheet, and then the range, the columns, where we want to extract our unique values, which is columns A and B. We're going to use the advanced filter to do that. And the first input we need to define here is the action, the type of action we want to perform. We want this first option, Excel filter copy. 
the next argument we need to define is the range we want to copy to. So this is called copy to range. And then we list where we want it to go. That is our range variable we just created. And then the final input we need to define here is whether or not we want unique values. And that is true false. And we want true here because we want unique values. So now at this point, we can define our last row variable. So that is going to be equal to our range. And that was defined up here. So that's the range E1 through F1. What we want to do is end Excel down and return the row number because that's like hitting control down arrow from this range here which will take us to the last row containing values because at this point we'll have our unique values copied over to those this range here and this will then return the last row containing values so I'll go ahead and just run this because I think it'll be a little easier to see what's going on here. So I'm going to F8 through this one line of code at a time. So this should copy our unique values over, and it does. And then we have our last row variable currently set to nothing. So when I execute this line, it's now set to row 15, which is where the end point of our data is in those two columns. So now at this point, we're ready to add a sum ifs formula in these cells here based on this data set here with our sum range being column C. So we want to repeat a series of steps. So we're going to use a for loop because we want to begin in cell G2, go all the way down to our last row variable, which is as of right now, row 15. So to repeat a series of steps, we're going to use a for loop. I'm going to define a counter variable here. Most folks just use I, it stands for iterator. And we're going to define a beginning point, which is row 2. And this I represents our rows. And we're going to define an ending point. We want this to go to our last row variable. So what we're going to use here is worksheet and cells. And it has number inputs for row and column indexes. The first one is row. We want our counter variable there. And then the column we want is column number seven because that's column G. And we're going to set this equal to the worksheet function. And what we want is the sum ifs function. So I know I'm going to run out of space here so I'm gonna hit space and then underscore to finish this code on a new line so we have some ifs the first input is our sum range so that's gonna be our worksheet and then range CC then we have our first criteria range which is gonna be our worksheet and then range AA because that's the branch number column We then have our criteria, which is going to be our worksheet and cells. And that's going to be our row variable. And then we want to look at our criteria values here in these rows. So we're going to reference our counter variable, which begins on row two. And that's column E, so that's column 
five. I am going to copy this here because we're going to have another criteria column. It's going to be column B this time, which is the order date. And we want the same row, but our criteria to be column 6, which is column F. So that should be everything we need there. This begins at row two, sets row two, uh, column seven or column G, cell G2, to the output of this worksheet function, which is based on the criteria in the corresponding uh, columns as the criteria. So then we need to reference the keyword next and then our counter variable to go back up to the top, increment this to three, and repeat this process all the way to our last row variable, which right now is row 15. So another thing I meant to do here is add a header to column G. So we'll do that maybe up above this. So we have our worksheet range. I think what I'm going to do is copy column F or cell F1 to column G and then change the value because that will copy the formatting. That'll make our lives a little easier. So I'm going to reference F1 copy destination equals our worksheet and G1 and then we'll change G1 to a value of total So the last thing I want to do is sort our output here by column F. So we're going to reference our entire range there where our output is though. So we're going to reference range E through G and then the sort method. and the first input we need to define here is what column we want to sort on and you can really just use any cell in that column so we'll just use the shorthand cell reference F1 in brackets and then the only other thing I want to define here is that we have headers so that is just going to be the keyword header and then Excel yes. I think we will also need to possibly auto fit our columns. So we'll do that as well. Reference columns and then auto fit. And we'll go ahead and format our total column to an accounting style format. So just range G number format. We'll set that equal to an accounting style if I can type here. So that should be everything. I think what I'll do is try and minimize this a little bit. I'll go ahead and just clear this, clear all of this out so we can see what it looks like as we run all of this. 
and there it is. Now, it might be a good idea to clear out the previous filter if you're planning on running this multiple times. So up here, what we could do is reference our output range, which is columns E through G, and just the clear method. So I'll just F8 through this one time. This is going to clear all of this out before anything else happens, and then I can just hit play and run the rest. So that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.